Hi everyone and welcome back to our channel. Today we're going to talk about this little exciting setup here, the Samyang VAF system. And the reason why I'm saying system, not just lenses and accessories, because in my opinion to truly appreciate what they can do, you have to think of it as a whole system, not just individual items put together. So we're going to see what's the difference between cine lenses and photographic lenses, where do they fit and what future it could bring for this system. Obviously, this is not the full setup yet. Uh, this is just the three lenses and the one accessory Samyang released already. This one is the 24, 35 and 75 millimeter T1.9 lenses. And this one is the monofocus adapter that uh, you can attach on the front, more on that later. There will be another one coming soon, uh, the 45 T1.9. Samyang promised it to deliver in the second quarter of 2023 which is we're into it so any day now maybe and then by the end of the year we will also have a 20 millimeter t 1.9 which sounds really exciting for me and i hope there will be a 20 millimeter f 1.8 counterpart for photography as well because all these lenses as you can see they have they uh tiny counterparts. We made a video on the 75 millimeter comparing the tiny series with the VAF series. Uh, we planned on doing for all the others but because they perform really similar, the results were really similar, we just uh, did for the 75, sorry about it. Uh, in a nutshell, if you don't want to watch the whole video about why not, uh, there is uh, a major differences between the two lenses is that the VF lenses are a little less contrasty which is what we prefer for videography compared to the uh, tiny lenses and if you compare them as a system the tiny lenses don't have that constant uh, color toning as the VAF lenses have but again more on that later. So what's the difference between the cine lenses and the photographic lenses? Well for the untrained eye the cine lenses have those big cogs and they look funky while photographic lenses just simple you have the usual controls on it but obviously it's a bit more deeper than that so we're going to see how they compare because when it comes down to the basics they just glass elements aperture and all the things are roughly the same so you can use a videography cine lens for photography if you want and you can use a, a, a photographic lens for cinematography as well so don't limit yourself that for cinema you need a cine lens or for photography you can't use a cine lens because that's for videography. So the main difference is down to functionality. Basically the cine lenses are tend to be manually coupled which means manual focus, manual aperture and the modern photographic lenses are tend to be uh, electronically coupled which means autofocus and auto aperture which means you can set the aperture from the camera or the camera can decide the aperture. Obviously on these lenses you can still do manual focus and manual aperture but the way it works is different from a mechanically coupled and that's the main advantage for cinematographers on the cine lenses that because they are mechanically coupled when you turn the focusing ring then it will move the focusing mechanism directly so they are linked together which means if you turn the focusing ring to a certain position that will be the same focusing distance while if you turn the focusing ring on a modern lens like this one then it will just tell the focusing motor to move back move forward so the same principle applies to the aperture as well so for example if a lens is mechanically coupled then as you turn the aperture ring it directly controls the aperture blades while on an electrical system when you turn the aperture ring if the lens has one then you're technically telling the camera body to change the aperture to a certain setting and tell the lens to jump to that setting. So it's not as smooth uh, as on a manical one. The reason behind it is because on a manical one between f2 and f2.2, let's say, you have infinite steps. While on an electronic coupled lens, you might only have one big jump or if your camera can do smaller jumps then it will be smaller jumps but still a finite number and still you can see those jumpiness so that's the key difference and it's quite important for cinematographers to have this nice smooth action both in a focusing and both in aperture control so when it comes to optical performance they very very similar uh, usually expensive cine lenses have very well corrected distortions and they usually have no focus breathing which 
photography lenses can get away with and usually photography lenses are a bit more sharper because cine lenses they don't need that critical sharpness because you will have a motion blur anyway so optical performance i would say that there's no difference on on the lower level uh, it's only on the very high level and the differences are very very minuscule so so i hope now you understand what's the difference between cine lens and the photography lens uh, so let's see where the Samyang VF system falls. Uh, is it a perfect hybrid? Is it more cine lens? Is it uh, more photography lens? Or did Samyang just miss the point? As we say in Hungarian, which means between two chairs you fall under the table. So did they miss the both targets or did they get a perfect hybrid lens that, that good for both? Now, we've been using the VF lenses for a while now, and I just received the manual focus adapter. So, my opinion that the lenses on their own, they just lenses, they just the photography lenses, which are good for videography as well. You're missing out the whole point of having this system. And the reason why I'm saying that because one of the key strengths for these lenses are uh, the unified system, which means that their color rendition are the same. They are exactly the same weight. They are exactly the same weight balance. So if you put one on the camera and let's say you do a gimbal and you balance it, you balance it for all of them, which is a really, really great tool because it makes it really easy to quickly swap between the lenses. They have this uh, little rubberized texture which is compatible with the focus puller systems which have like those little cogs. Uh, the reason why I have the 35150 because this had it as well because it has linear focusing so Samyang was thinking about the videographers as well with this lens. But as I said if you're just using one on their own then you're missing out a lot. It will be still a great lens for, for videography, the autofocus is really good, um, I find the color rendition very neutral and they have a little lower contrast compared to a photography lens which means that when you're working in log files you get a little more uh, dynamic range which is I think is fantastic. Now um, obviously they're not perfect. Uh, you can set them up uh, to have linear focusing which means uh, that the whole focus draw is going to be a 300 degree large turn and more or less it will be uh, linear which is similar to the manically coupled lenses so for example if you set two points and you keep moving the lens between those two points then the focus motor will if it can keep up it will have the same focus pull all the time but as i said if it can keep up and that's one of the issues that i found with uh, autofocus signal lenses that sometimes after a 10 15 try you will get out of sync so you will have to set the two points again but this was changed uh, a lot with this adapter and i will explain to you why in a second now when it comes to the functionalities, uh, they all have the focus hold button, which you can, if you press for three seconds, then it will set the focus point there. And anytime you move the focus out of that point, when you just press the button, it will jump back where exactly you set it. Uh, that's quite good for, for example, if you're doing astrophotography as well, because the 24 millimeter uh, tiny lens, I think, Nope, that's the 75. They look alike. <laughs> so the 24mm was the first one, I think, introducing this feature that uh, used for astrophotography. photography. And uh, VF24 is exactly the same. Yeah, that's the VF24. They're exactly the same optically, just functionality is different. So if you use this one for astro, you can use this one for astro as well. And I tried the other two as well, just quickly for astro photography, and they are fantastic for that. So VF lenses are good for astro. So let's talk about the VF system. Uh, what makes it great, in my opinion, and what are the key features of it? Now, if you look at the lenses, if I put them next to each other, you can see that they look exactly the same. Uh, which is technically the key strength for the whole system that they are very unified, they are exactly the same weight, same balance, same look, same position for the focusing ring, so it's easy to interchange them. 
And also, there's one more advantage that's probably being ignored, that when you are on a shoot and you have a little free time, you can make a little extra money by playing with your friends that here's the 35 lens so now here's the 35 where's the 35 take your bets the jokes aside as you can see that all the lenses are the same and actually that's a bit of a curse for me because i wish they were color coded so for example the 35 would be green the 24 red and uh, 75 blue so when you're on a shoot and you need to quickly change a lens, then you don't need to go and see that, okay, which one is which. You just quickly look at them, okay, I need the red because I need a 24 one. So I hope in Mark II, please, some young take notes. On the Mark II versions, it will be set like that and be a bit different. So when you're looking at the front, uh, you will see that it is something that you haven't seen before. There is a, a little bionic mount here and some electric contacts. Uh, when Samyang announced these lenses, they didn't say anything about this. Actually, they were very secretive, <laughs> even to us, about what these uh, electric contacts will do. So there were lots of guest work. Uh, most people were saying that there's going to be an anamorphic uh, adapter and there's going to be maybe uh, electronic variant controlled by the lens but for me I, when i was thinking for anamorphic you don't really need electric contacts and uh, variant yeah that would make sense but i always thought that this is going to be used for the accessory to control the lens not the other way around and when something really is this one the manual focus adapter it actually confirmed my suspicion and uh, the way you mount it is technically very similar to the canon fd mount so if you ever use that one then you know that you align the lens and in this case the accessory up there's a little red dot in here and there's a little crevice here you align those two up then you slide it in and you just turn the locking ring and here we go it's safely attached now the accessory this one the manual focus one has an led light as well for tele light just like all the lenses they also have one on the side which is used for aligning with the camera body uh, we first seen that on the 24 millimeter tiny lens, uh, so it carried on. So now let's see what's the difference between focusing like this and focusing like this. And let's start with the basic mode. You can set it up for linear focusing uh, and non-linear. Non-linear means that if you turn it very fast, then it jumps a bigger one. Uh, or if you turn it slower, then it jumps a smaller one. So it has kind of like an acceleration. Uh, but linear focusing means and it has a 300 degree throw, which means from infinite to minimum focus, you need to turn 300 degrees, so almost a full turn to get the full focusing uh, amount. Now, uh, the difference is that if you are in linear mode and you're turning it normal speed, so let's say you mark it that here's three meters, here's one meter, and you're turning from three to one, then it will say that move the focusing two meters back. If you're turning the other way around, back to the three meter mark, then it will say move two meters forward. But if you're turning it too fast, then it might not read the same. So it will, it will not read the uh, exact amount of how much you turned and it can get out of sync if the focus motor can't keep up again it can get out of sync so it's not a perfect solution but very very close to what you can get with a manically coupled so when it comes to this one this is a bit different uh, as you can see it has hard stops and also it has this uh, focus scale distance scale here so for example if you turn this to the focus scale to three meters it will tell the lens to focus at three meters if you move it to one meter instead of it saying okay move now backwards two meters it will say move to exactly one meter why is it a massive difference uh, because if you turn it fast and the focus motor can't keep up then it will lag a bit but it will still go from three meter to one meter so focus pulls are extremely easy with this add-on because you will never technically never go out of sync because it's not telling relative distance but it's telling exactly what point so it's not saying go back two meters even if it's your if you're like on seven meter then it will go back to five or if you're on 
20 meter, it will go to 18 meter. You see what I mean? But it will exactly go, say that go to this point, go to that point. So because of that, with this add-on, you can have uh, exact focus pull. Very, very precise, perfectly repeatable. So that, for me, is as close as you can get to mechanical couple. I would say it is just as good as a mechanically coupled lens. Uh, if you have an Olympus camera with an uh, Olympus lens which has the clutch system that's doing the same just obviously those have a much smaller focus throw so they're usually just a 90 degree uh, opposed to this which is a 300 degree. Now they set uh, the minimum focus to 0 0.2 which is not all lenses, not all VEF lenses can do. So if you go uh, over, let's say, uh, I'm not exactly sure of the lenses, uh, the minimum focus distance, but let's say if your lens is at 0 0.7 meter is the minimum focusing distance, and you go down to 0 0.2, it will do nothing. So between, technically it will ignore these areas if you go over but uh, most of the lenses can go pretty close uh, so it's not going to be the problem but yeah between 0 0.2 and infinity it has a 300 degree draw so that's quite massive quite good easy to make very nice smooth focus pulls with uh, repeatable results so that's why this one is a game changer. Now, obviously it wouldn't be me if I wouldn't complain about something. So the one thing I don't like that it doesn't have a filter thread. I wish something would put an 82 millimeter filter thread inside. Um, there's room for it and, and that will just fit exactly where it should be. Uh, you can use a matte box I, uh, at the outer diameter is I think 95 millimeter. Don't quote me on that. Uh, but a matte box is big and, and it's a bit clunky to use usually expensive as well and most of us have 82 millimeter filters um, from photography as well so i wish it would come with something like that but maybe a next version so overall i believe that something really really hit the spot uh, with this system it's a perfect hybrid system if you're using the lenses just on their own without the adapter for auto focusing on a gimbal it's really great that you technically balance the gimbal for one and you balance for all. The similar color rendition uh, is really great because it saves time in post-process. You don't need to technically color match them because they are color matched by default. So that's a really, really great addition. The little LED light on the front, again, it's really good because there was sometimes that I was, I was going around and Alistair was like, no, you're not recording. So <laughs> these things are, are really, really, uh, are, are helpful tools and as I say that when it comes to these accessories and I'm really really curious what other accessories we will have uh, because this is really promising that some young things uh, the right way in my opinion and you have a hybrid camera most like the a7 III, a7 IV or even the higher models like a1 they perfect hybrid cameras and these are perfect hybrid lenses for that so I don't know if there will be a zoom lens later on or, or there's going to be more lenses for the VF. I'm waiting for the 45mm to come out. Uh, I'm quite excited because that's kind of like the, a perfect uh, focal length for me when you want to replicate the human eye, uh, the human vision. So, and then 20mm wide and go, wow, <laughs> I'm so excited about that. So. We'll see this year two more lenses, as I said. Uh, I don't know if there will be more accessories as well, but for now, with only these three and later on five lenses, and with only one accessory, it's already a very versatile system. And also, why something didn't include this in all the lenses, just have all of them like this? Because then they will be all heavier, bigger, and technically, because you can just interchange them you can save money as well because if you if it would be in all the lenses then you would have to pay for this for all lenses but here you can just pay it once and you would have it for all lenses which is a great thing isn't it just one more thing before i finish it's for you samyang please a back cap for the accessories because right now it's just collecting dust from this and which i don't really like
So that's it for the Samyang VEF system. If you haven't yet, please subscribe so you will not miss if we have more of these. And, and just if you like this video, please smash the like button, help us out with that. And see you on the next one.